So welcome everyone. Today is December 7th, 2016, and this is the Quantum Healing with Candace show, and I'm so glad that you all are joining us today, whenever it is that you're joining us. And I am so excited to welcome a new friend of mine. Her name is Julia Balaz, and she is from Ireland, the County Wicklow region, which is, I believe, in the southeastern part of Ireland, the beautiful um, magical place of Ireland that I was blessed to visit just a few months ago. So I'm happy to be able to say I know a little bit about your mm -hmm. home. Um, Julia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Candice. It's such an honor, such a pleasure to be connecting with you this way. Thanks very much for inviting me. You know, you are, have become such a valuable member of our original support forum with your amazing stories of, of you know, some really an interesting and a wonderful, very detailed sessions. And we wanted to get together and share some of your stories um, with the public. But before we even go there, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and how it is that you discovered Dolores Cannon's work and you know, came to take her class and do this work of quantum healing? Very good, I'll be happy to. Um, <clears throat> so I've always, always uh, been interested in you know, metaphysical matters. I think when I was 11 years old, I remember, I never forget the walk, I was walking up the hill and I tried to figure out where are my thoughts coming from? And I just tried to feel where are, like, is it in my brain? Is it in my heart? I just couldn't pinpoint where the thought is coming from. And that's when I realized I'm more than just this physical body. And uh, since then, I just started researching information about human body, the biology, souls, spirit side, souls journeys and the universe, metaphysical matters, just ongoing um, search and it hasn't stopped until to this point. So, um, um, and then actually I came to a point when I was so confused about all the information as you can imagine a young teenager would be. There are so many different religions and so many different points of views. Um, that uh, I ask for a teacher, someone help, that'll come and tell me where is the truth, what, you know, where is the truth in all this. And um, surely, a few days later, I met a very strange man who gave me answers to all I was looking for, and he actually um, became my mentor for, for some time, uh, guiding me in meditations, and, uh, you know, he channeled messages for me that was the most appropriate thing for me to do. And I remember at that time, um, my memory was exceptional. In school, whatever I looked at, I just looked at it and I remembered it. And then I started, you know, my intuition came, just was zooming. Uh, and uh, it, then it came to a point where I was too much out there and too little present in this moment. And I was, I think, at 15 when I just felt my aura expanded rapidly I felt the entire city and I got scared how can I live like this how can I you know um, be with the teenagers and with my friends if nothing interests me in this life anymore I just want to be out there it was very you know it was just too much for that age and uh, everything just zapped back into this body and I stopped for probably 10 years and I just lived my life um, you know, but I was a really uh, naughty teenager. <laughs> My mom had a challenging time with me for a few years, uh, but it all turned around. I learned so much uh, from that period. So <clears throat> then I moved to Ireland, which was 12 years ago. I come from, I was born in Slovakia, and uh, I came to Ireland 12 years ago, and uh, I started again working on myself and uh, really taking this inner journey and trying to break through any limiting beliefs I had. And I felt there was a lot of um, emotions from the past that needed to be healed. So I was doing a really good job all by myself uh, using different modalities. Um, then I married and I had uh, a daughter. Uh, everything was perfect, all going well. But when my daughter uh, was two years old, she started triggering my anger. I was a very balanced person. Nothing would trigger me. I was just like a river zen most of the time. But then when she, beca uh, when she became two years old and when she misbehaved, I had just this 
really nasty anger in me, which I didn't recognize from any time before. And it was getting worse and worse. And I almost struggled controlling myself. It just really felt so bad. And the energy was becoming denser and denser. And I just sense it is something from the past that is calling for healing. Um, so that was the time when I uh, looked for hypnosis because I believe it is really something from the past. I didn't recall any of this from this lifetime, so I believe it would have been a past life memory. So I came across Dolores Cannon. Immediately I was drawn to it, fascinated by it. I booked my own session uh, in Dublin with a beautiful practitioner there. And indeed, as I had my own session, I a memories came up which were actually from this lifetime. I only I remember I thought I had a beautiful childhood. I remember we get when going to beautiful places and all harmonic, you know, family memories. But in this hypnosis I found myself being desperate in the middle of the house and my parents were screaming and shouting and all these memories recall were recalled. So um what I found fascinating about this QHD session was that <clears throat> there I was lying, being aware of being in the room, listening to the practitioner, going through this relaxed um, moment. You know, she was doing this relaxation technique, visualization. I was there. Everything was fine. And then in a second like that, I was there in my five-year-old body feeling all these emotions, really intense, in, instantly crying. It was literally like that, zap, and you're there. Um, couldn't believe it. So a lot of emotions came uh, through then. Um, I had incredible healing, and in that one day, I will never forget the feeling of lightness when I was leaving her office. I was, you know, on cloud nine. It really all left me. And from that day on, my uh, daughter, she, she could do whatever and I would be fine with it. There was no anger anymore. It was all gone and released then. So, That's um, amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a really amazing story. We have lots of clients who feel that way that day. Now, it, all, it doesn't always happen like that for people that it's instantaneous like that. Sometimes there's things to work on or things happen later. But very often we hear that, that I feel so much better. I feel wonderful. I feel like I can fly after these sessions. Um, congratulations. That feeling was really strong. Once we healed the inner child, um, it took quite some time, like it was a long session. Um, then I started feeling this incredible pain in my left knee. And uh, since then, it came about two more times. And it was always when I was healing the inner child. But this pain was just unbearable on during this hypnosis, and we couldn't figure out what is this pain like. It just appeared, and for maybe five minutes, but it was excruciating pain. I almost felt like some entities are operating my knee, or like I'm losing my leg. It was unbearable, unbearable. And um, so, as we connected to higher selves, I'll talk about that too. Um, it started laughing and the answer was that we wanted her to feel the pain, feel how real this is. We wanted her to feel the pain so strongly so that she can never deny how real this is, how real this healing and this emotion and this going back in time is. <laughs> uh, and obviously through that knee, uh, they released all the guilt and emotions because it was there. Um, shame, anger, and all that. Yeah. Interesting. So, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the left side, did it have anything to past. do with it? Yes. It, they, the higher self said that the, the past um, feelings that I had, the negative feelings, anger, guilt, uh, resentment, all the negative feelings that I had were not were stored in my left knee because it was coming from the past. That's where my body kept it. So there was a huge release, so it was really strong. And then this year, actually, when I was doing more work and uh, when I did some work again on the inner child and the teenage years, again, I felt my left knee um, painful for maybe half an hour. And then once I did the energy clearing work, it was gone. But it was nothing comparing the, the strength of the pain right there and then. 
Um, so then as the higher self came about with my personal experience, again, I was fascinated by me being aware, lying on the bed, just went through this incredible healing and emotions I felt. I was aware of the practitioner, her, what she was saying, the room, and then this higher self, this, you know, my voice changed, my energy changed. I loved it. I, I love my higher self connecting to my higher self. Um, great messages, great answers, very appropriate to um, the questions I had. It just, I, I loved it. I couldn't wait to do it again, but I didn't then until this year. Uh, but it was incredible, incredible experience. Interesting. You know, it's great that you say that you are aware of yourself just laying there because a lot of people have some misunderstandings about hypnosis and about this work of quantum healing. And I've been lucky enough to experience this about a dozen times myself. And I'm always aware that I'm wherever I am, you know, and that it's not anesthesia. It is, you know, it's an altered state, but you know, you're not, you're not completely out. Now, there's some people who have trouble remembering when it's all over, of course, and some people uh, really do enter the somnambulistic state, but many people are able to experience these amazing things, even that, like, that you have in, in a higher level where you know, they're aware of their surroundings. It makes me fully understand now how we truly are multidimensional beings because in the other two sessions that I had recently, you have this literally multi-dimensional awareness because you are either in space or in the past life, if you're aware of yourself, then you're aware of yourself from when you were younger and you can talk to these different aspects and then you are aware that there's some uh, consciousness communicating with your consciousness and communicating with the practitioners. Like you literally are aware of all these conversations of different beings at the same time. Uh, it's incredible. We, the human consciousness is fascinating. I love it. And, you know, I don't think we could have done this even, I mean, I don't think I could have done this, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And I don't think many humans out there could either. And I love the fact that you're bringing up that word, multidimensional. Like, I've even had clients come to me who literally uh, go to sleep and wake up as another physical being sometimes. And they're afraid, of course, <laughs> mm -hmm. to tell anybody in their life that this is going on. And they're, you know, they're afraid of being locked away. And just imagine all the people who are locked away for this kind mm -hmm. of thing. So doing this multidimensionality in this, in this way, we just more and more and more are able to experience different facets of reality like that. Mm -hmm. And now with the energetical shift on the planet, uh, many people who would do meditations or some sort of, you know, energy work, they're able to um, enter these multidimensional states mm -hmm. without um, using hypnosis. So it's incredible. And uh, I see now on the forum with the practitioners, um, the conversations that they are there, that more, you know, the more we do the QHD as practitioners, because we always exchange sessions, um, the more we become open to accessing information from wherever we focus. It's just like World Wide Web, but it's right there. It's amazing. Yes, and it's happening more and more. There's, there's more places. So it's always been easy to think about meditating and dreams and hypnosis giving you information like that. But it's happening in other ways. I mean, I remember when I was heading to the hospital when my mama had her stroke back last May, and it, it was so early in the morning and I'm driving like 70 miles an hour on the highway. And I was thinking, I wish I could have sat quietly and connected and connected with Dolores before all of this was happening. And I'm driving 70 miles an hour down the road and I hear her like literally jump in my head and say, I can talk to you right now. We, this, this, there's no rules <laughs> about how this works. Yeah. So it's only belief system. So, you know, let's talk. And she talked to me the whole way I went to the hospital, and I'll never forget that. I love this um, idea of allowing yourself to have access to the, all the dimensions. Definitely. I really see the telepathy is becoming more and more common. With friends I now have, you, you literally, you talk. And oh, it was incredible. I was actually going home um, not too long ago uh, driving, and I had this most amazing being next to me. 
and she connected to the person who just conducted a beautiful meditation class and I could send their conversation too. Like it was literally a three-way conversation in the car, tuning in and literally asking questions and answering. It was incredible. <laughs> You're giving me goosebumps. I know that this is, I mean, it's astonishing. Some of, uh, you may be aware of my friend Pamela Erlen. Um, yes. I'm having dreams sometimes that I am her. And I've never even met like her family and I've had dreams of her daughter and me being her. I mean, that's just kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, I believe it, huh? Yeah, it really, really is. And you've got, you've had such great sessions, and you haven't been practicing very long, have you? That's true. Yes. Yeah, so I had my level one. I took my level one in 2014, January 2014. Um, I've done a good few sessions with uh, my friends and acquaintances, uh, but then I felt I want to take a break and do more more work. Um, so I continued uh, my own healing, literally onion layers. There's always more. You, you you know get rid of one thing, you understand something about yourself, and then there is another right there in front of you. But I love it. I, I do. I, it's the best thing one can ever do to go within and deal with whatever is there lying heavy because if you don't do that then you constantly come across situations that are like right in your face here you really need to deal with this do it and once you do it then life is magical synchronicities and you meet beautiful people and you really start living your soul's purpose and it's the best thing one can ever do you know and who would ever have known when you were uh, you know, in your wild teenage years or in your young 20s that you were storing all of this stuff in your left knee, you know? True, true. And actually, as you mentioned it, I, as I, I research, I always read, I don't really um, watch TV or movies. I, I try on getting new information in, but I was always in the closet um, spirit junkie. I never really talked about. I might have had one or two very close friends that knew, but to everyone else, I was just like everyone else. But so I was always in the closet. And this year, I decided I can't hide my passion anymore. And amazing things started happening since then. Now, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you start. Uh, you know, for myself, I started that kind of quietly, um, and I would watch my words around certain people. Yeah, I don't, very much. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't do that anymore at all. And there really isn't anyone in my life at anywhere who I can't talk about UFOs, ETs, angels, past lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, just on a daily basis, it's just normal life to me anymore. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. have to watch my yeah. anymore. It, it didn't happen right away. But, you know, there are clients, I bet you get them too, who show up and say, I can't talk to anybody like this. Well, once you start living your life like this, it's strange to have those kind of people enter into your sphere. Yeah, you, your entire environment shifts completely. You start meeting different people, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's very much happened um, to me this year. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to hear about some of your sessions. And what I love about um, the fact that it's December is you have got this really, really great session that, that fits for the season, um, a sort of Jesus and Mary Magdalene session. Mm -hmm. Would you tell us about that session? Sure, I'll be happy to. That one was really, really good because there was so much detail and the flow of the session was so easy going. This client, she was really able to go into this past life and just she described it so beautifully. I hardly asked any questions and she just kept talking and talking. I was just sitting there literally like watching a movie and just in awe um, with the amount of detail that she was able to provide about that past life. So... Um, are you ready? <laughs> I am so ready. Great. So um, once I ask her, you, you know, you go through this um, uh, um, technique, which is very simple and very powerful. Dolores has done a wonderful job uh, throughout the 45 years of her discovering this amazing QHC technique. So once I ask this client, you know, where, where are you? Describe what you see. She says she sees a black Scorpio in front of her feet. So um, I knew she will probably be somewhere in the desert, so I asked more. 
And she started describing that, yes, she feels she's a man. She's walking across desert towards a mountain far in the distance. And she has one companion, a male companion. And I asked her, what, is, what are you wearing? So she said, um, I have no shoes. My companion does have shoes. And are, we are completely dressed in quite simple clothes, but our entire body is you know, well covered uh, in clothes because of the sandstorms. And she felt really tired. She said, they're walking for days. And um, I asked, do you carry anything on you? And she said, yep, I have a little satchel and we only have a little water left. And uh, I also have, there are black stones, black sparkly stones um, in the satchel. And I said, what will you do with these stones? And she said, well, I'll pay for a medicine for my younger son who's very weak. So there was already a beautiful story uncovering there. So I moved her across the desert until they got to where they were heading. And uh, they got to a healer who was an old man sitting in the middle of the village. She was describing all these different tents and the smells and what was going on there. She said it was really windy and there was a lot of sand in the air. Um, so beautifully, beautiful story. Uh, so <clears throat> they were sitting in this tent and she saw this man preparing the medicine in front of the two men as they watched it. And uh, I said, describe the medicine. Can you tell me more about, you know, what is in the tent. So she said, she was talking about all these amazing aromas and scents that she could feel, um, all these different herbs and the medicine itself as he was preparing it. So it, was, it looked like a black oil, it was very gooey. And uh, I asked, can you ask him what is it made of? And she said, sure. And then she started telling me exactly what was in the medicine. She mentioned, I remember, um, skin of the animals, oil from the skin of the animals. Very strange, yeah. Coconut oil, sage, lavender, rosehip, berries, and a few other things I can't remember, but quite detailed. It was amazing to me that she, you know, was able to, to tell me exactly. And then she mentioned that she sees a beautiful um, woman standing right behind uh, this man. And I said, you know, tune into her and tell me more about her. She said she's, she's never seen such beautiful green eyes. Her face is covered, but you can tell how beautiful she is. And uh, now she noticed that she's, um, sorry, he actually, it was female client, but in this story, she, he was a, she was a male. So he noticed that she was actually the, the lady behind this man. She was whispering to him what to use, what kind of medicine to use. So then she realized she is the healer, not the man. This man was a father protecting his daughter because they didn't want anyone to know that she has powers, that she has knowledge, that she is a healer because her mother was killed because of the gifts that she uh, possessed. Her mother was also a very powerful healer. And uh, as she tuned into this female um, person in this past life, she could see her memory from when she was a little girl. Her mother was dragged away from their home and uh, by soldiers and killed because of her powers. So as she was describing this, then she said they they lower their voice every time somebody passed by the tent. Um, they always, you know, remain really quiet because they're afraid that somebody will find out that it's actually the daughter that is very powerful. So again, incredible amount of detail that was given there. So I asked uh, my client, uh, ask this healer, female healer if she has any message for you because you know you can do it in, with your mind you can connect to her so indeed she had messages for him and uh, she said um, that this medicine will help his son that his heart is much stronger than they think that he will be fine and that he should give this medicine also to his older son so now we knew he had an older son too and uh, his wife and that she could see, she could connect to his wife across the desert, and she could see that his wife is very weak. She lost all her powers because they, she had three miscarriages. She was very, her, you know, um, sad about all that, and her body was um, very uh, weak. Um, he said both his sons are very skinny. It's hard to live in a desert, uh, but this medicine will help them all. And she also gave him stones, blue lapis, and uh, three red stones, I can't remember the name, but she told him to give it to his wife for her to put it on her uh, abdomen and that it'll heal the, the, the womb and she'll be fine. 
so he was delighted and oh, oh she also had a message for himself and she was, she told him that he's a great warrior but it is time for him to stay at home and take care of his family and that he will be able to um, make money by looking after the olive trees in his area so he can start olive tree farm amazing so then there was time for him to go back home so we moved him forward uh, to the day when he arrived back home with the medicine and she actually mentioned that on the way that she could see how they're walking back across the desert and how his companion is so excited about what he has just seen and experienced. He just couldn't stop talking. He just couldn't believe what he saw. But he, the, the man that had, had this uh, ill family, he said, I cannot even listen to him. I'm just all focused on getting home as soon as possible. All I can think about is my family and I want to help them. But he's so excited. So again, I was amazed by how he really, you know, how she truly relived the life. Um, so indeed, they, he got home in time, and he was describing how his wife was really worried. She was he was gone for a long time, and she was starting to lose hope whether he'll make it home in time. And then he looked at his, at his um, uh, little son, and he said he looks close to being dead, just skin and bones, uh, looking very weak. So they gave him a drop of the medicine, and uh, then I had to move him forward to when they're feeling better so they he did he could describe how they all started gaining weight and everything is um, getting better his wife is getting her color back um, so that was all good then he moved forward to another important day his sons were uh, now grown up and his older son was becoming a warrior um, too and well-known uh, warrior um, as I move him to another important day, he was actually in fight, in the fight or in war, and uh, I asked him, "How do you feel about, um, you know, fighting?" And he said, "He's very upset. Everyone is very upset with the emperor. It's a very stupid emperor. He always gets in trouble for um, upsetting someone because he gets drunk and he then, you know, upsets other." Um, kings or whoever was in that time so he was saying everyone thinks it's a very stupid emperor and his father was just like him also very stupid and people are upset that they have to keep leaving their families behind and fighting for this stupid emperor so that was a little entertaining um, and as we progressed through his life my client's voice was becoming weaker and weaker you could literally see how his life energy of this man as he was getting older and older was you know leaving him towards the end of his life she was just whispering i could hardly hear her but uh, the recording still catched um, everything she was saying so we moved to the last day of his life and um, she was whispering uh, this man's feelings um, he saw uh, the family around him his wife was very sad um, they all knew it's his last day she was much younger than he was and uh, his sons now had children and um, he was sad to leave them but he, he felt that it's time his, his, his body was tired so it was time to go so he took his last breath he was on the other side and on the other side um, he saw his younger sister came to greet him and his younger sister she died very little um, he tried to save her he said she was fetched by wild animals and died that way unfortunately but uh, she looked very happy now everything was fine so he was relieved to see that because he was carried a lot of guilt um, throughout his life that he couldn't save her he was only a little boy then and another beautiful being that came to see him was Jesus um, and uh, his face just uh, her face just brightened up and I said uh, why is Jesus there what kind of message he has for him for this man's soul or spirit so Jesus told him that um, he is there because this man had a similar um, part of his life was similar than the life of Jesus that he was protecting a very powerful healer throughout his life 
that Mary Magdalene was also a very powerful healer and she had great wisdom and knowledge and connection. Um, but uh, he had to step into the forefront so, because at that time women didn't have any power. They weren't allowed to speak or allowed to be known as powerful and you know knowledgeable. So he told him that you know he did uh, he fulfilled his um, life purpose um, and that he did indeed do a great job. And then Jesus was talking more about Mary Magdalene, um, how unfortunate it is that her story is completely twisted and that she truly was a beautiful being and one of the apostles, in fact, and that a lot of teachings were done thanks to her knowledge, too, that she would have channeled, and uh, that a lot of female healers were present on earth at that time, and that now, again, is time when this female energy is very strong again, and, you know, I know so many beautiful, beautiful female healers uh, now already. So uh, he says this female, strong female healing energy is already on the planet, and that uh, truth will be revealed about Mary Magdalene too. And indeed, I've, I've seen so many channelings about uh, Mary Magdalene already just confirming all this. So that was the story. Then when we asked, when we connected to the higher self of the client, um, from whispering, she started talking out loud, completely changed her voice. And I ask, what, why was it important for her to see this life? And Higher Self said that my client in this lifetime, she doesn't believe, she, needs, she doesn't believe um, that she as a woman can be as powerful as any man. That for many, many lifetimes, she was in a position where she had powerful men around her and she wasn't allowed to use her gifts. But in this lifetime, she must use the gifts she has. She's a great healer herself. And uh, that she just really have to step to the forefront, forefront and don't let men to overrule her. So that was really good. And since then, actually, I was in touch with this client and she's doing really, really well with her business and she's coming up really. So it's great. You know, um I get a lot of clients, I bet you do too, who in past lives were either tortured or killed for their uh, magnificent gifts of consciousness or healing. And it's absolutely true that the divine is coming forth now. The divine feminine and truth is, is manifesting. Uh, I have to share this with you. There's this tree uh, just outside the window from my vision here. When you started talking about the divine feminine and coming back into, uh, you know, the planet now with the energies and everything, that tree started filling up with cardinals. <laughs> oh, wow. Beautiful red bird, which of course is Dolores Cannon's calling card, is the cardinal. And I have yet to see that many cardinals in that tree uh, since the leaves started falling. Uh, so. Yeah, right now during this during this interview with you. And to me, uh, you know, I'm hearing Dolores Cannon. She's doing this thing. <laughs> she's, uh, she's very pleased. And uh, uh, it's, it's uh, amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so, I mean, look at the multidimensionality aspect here again. I mean, you spent quite a little bit of time talking with uh, the the personality that had left the man's body and was in the spirit realm, having such a detailed conversation that you even find out about a sibling and a story <laughs> there that didn't even have anything to do with the past life regression. And you haven't even yet gone back to talk about your client's current life or her higher self or how this even works. You're in this realm where you're, where you're connected it's, it's, it's really like stepping into a movie. It's, um, it's astonishing. 
did your client, was she like you? Was she, uh, did she have a memory? Did she know she was laying and having a session? And she was she so, so very much aware of all that. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And very, very trusting of you then and very trusting of the process to be able to let that story come out. And it's always interesting for us as practitioners to sort of figure out because, you know, not all sessions are like this. So some mm -hmm. sessions, uh, are a little more subdued and there's a little more um, stickiness about getting some of the information out and other people just so beautifully just slide into these stories and I'm always curious about uh, because you, you you never know you, you know, never, you never know. know when it's going to happen and you never you can't really say oh yes this client is going to have that kind of session or if not because some very spiritual clients uh, can be some of the tougher ones. And I think sometimes they have some great expectations about what's supposed to happen or not. So th it's no judgment on your advanced uh, level or anything like that. Um, had she done, had she experienced hypnosis before or anything like this, this particular client, or was this a new experience for her? She did two hypnosis before, I believe, but not QHD. And she did have different past life experiences. Uh, also with controlling men around her and um, so this wasn't her first one. A pattern. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually the higher self got quite upset with her. She said you're, she, it actually said you're really annoyed with her because this has been going on for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and we just like it really is like now it's you have to do it now. So I said don't worry she'll listen to the recording now. She will hear you. I'm sure it'll it'll change and it'll improve this time. So, Excellent. So again, I'm curious, so your client had experienced regressions before, so when she came out, um, and this was her first QHHT session, how did, what did she have to say about anything, the differences, in, if she in fact did talk about that? Mm, she um, was in awe about the amount of detail she saw and, that, and the life that was just revealed that came out of nowhere she couldn't have possibly imagined those kind of details and in such a flow it was there was no um, uh, it was just a beautiful flow of talking so you know you cannot there's no doubt that she was actually time traveling yeah such a gift such a beautiful mm -hmm. gift I know I always say uh, to practitioners you know when I'm coaching them or when we're talking about it on the original forum you know if, if things are going well and, and, you know, and your client is, is in the flow, really all you have to do is sit back and say the words, and then what happens <laughs> or what happens next? And, of course, there are yeah. times when you need a little more um, interaction and, and other things are happening. But, uh, you know, for, for clients to know that, uh, you know, in these sessions, we simply, you know, truly are going to use that phrase, hold the space. You know, we're just yeah. there allowing the, the thing to happen and sort of, you know, making sure that the client's goals and questions and um, concerns are, are uppermost when, when we're, you know, uh, um, you know, facilitating the dialogue. But we as practitioners, we don't say anything and we don't judge anything and we don't tell anybody anything and we don't do anything and we don't uh, suggest anything, which is the, the biggest single difference between what we do and traditional hypnosis. Traditional hypnosis is get relaxed and I'll tell you, you don't feel like smoking anymore. You know, and there's a real, you know, uh, dynamic of, uh, you know, uh, where the, the hip, uh, hypnotist or the hypnotherapist has sort of this power of, you know, well, we're going to do this, you know. But in this work, it isn't anything like that. It's all That's why I love it so much. Yeah, it's all about the client. It's all self-directed. It's all self-hypnosis. And it's, it's like having this long, involved daydream where you're just, um, you know, you're just talking out loud about and, and mm -hmm. stepping into a movie and, and somebody else is, is there making sure it's getting recorded nicely. <laughs> what I love about this the most is the empowerment people get out of it, how they realize that there is truly this part of them that has all this knowledge and all the wisdom and all the answers. And they cannot deny it and even after they leave the hypnosis the door is open they can always go back in and start asking questions and really go on this amazing journey of self-discovery just this empowerment is 
you know, invaluable. Amazing, amazing. Um, so happy to uh, to hear this amazing story. And you've got some other stories. We put on our uh, on our blog not long ago. You had a session about a night. I want to hear about that one next. Hmm. And this one actually, um, this past life, physically affected my clients. She every time she would have a fight with her partner, she would feel a really strong pain in her right arm and just she couldn't figure out, otherwise she was quite healthy, she couldn't figure out what, what was this pain about. It was always in her right, ma right arm and always when they were fighting. And um, so in this lifetime, she found herself being on a battlefield. She could tell, um, she felt quite bottle weary and uh, she felt as an older man. She could describe her um, armor in great detail. She could tell that um, every time they would give her new armor, it would always be an upgraded version of the previous <laughs> one. <laughs> armor that, point oh, Yeah, armor. totally. Everything, you know, there's constant upgrades uh, in this universe. So she could tell that uh, she would remember that um, the, the original armors were very stiff. She could hardly move, very heavy. And this time her armor was like armadillos, like there were layers over layers and it, it would follow her movements. And it was, she was very pleased with the last one she got. Um, so with this one, let me just sign it here. So she was on the battlefield and uh, the, the story started with her being on her last day of her life. So then we had to re, you know, go back in life and find out the full story and then we would end up again back on that battlefield where she uh, lost her life. So <clears throat> she it was very foggy, she couldn't see much and she said this fog has been there for a couple of days, it, it's very difficult to fight in this kind of weather and she, there's just dead bodies all over and uh, it, he's really he felt really tired and he said he, he doesn't want to fight anymore, he's been doing all his life and he just feels like this is it. What is the point? What, what a sad way to acquire wealth or land to kill so many people. And he really remembered that he killed thousands of people in this lifetime. So I said, you know, let's move you back to see what was this particular battle about. And he could see uh, he, he was standing up on looking at a map. Uh, with few other men and he felt that he was the one that was consulted. He was the most battle weary so he made decisions and it was between England and France. It was a fight between England and France. He felt he was on the English side and they were trying to win over some of the French um, ground. And uh, he said he doesn't really feel like going into this battle but you know they have to, and all he would want, all he wants, is to go back home just for a little while. So I said, "Great, let's go home. Let's have a look at your home." So she was describing her home that it was uh, the house was much better than the other houses in the village. He was doing really well uh, with his position, and um, he had this beautiful land, trees, garden. Um, I said, "Who's looking after the garden?" He said, "His wife, but she gets uh, help." as well. She only does what she likes to do. She's looking after children. He had two children, a boy and girl. And um, but she was quite happy uh, with, she, with the comfortable life um, she had. And I said, how does she feel about you being away uh, so much? And he said, well, now when I watch them from this perspective, I can actually see that they don't miss me as much as I would hope. Oh, no. And they don't worry about me as much as I would hope. They actually enjoy their life without me. And because when I come home, all they see is this tired old man who needs time to recover and actually, you know, settle back into normal life. And even children, they don't really know me. And when I come, they are almost afraid of me because I am this big man, battle weir with scar scars everywhere. Um, but I love coming home, he said. Um, I always <clears throat> get my energy, you know, recharge. Um, I love my trees and my garden. It's beautiful here, so peaceful, unlike the, the life I have as a soldier. And uh, every time I settle back into the family life, back into the routine, and I feel well, 
I can feel the the unsettled feeling again because I can sense when the messenger is coming. I ask her, how do you know when you have to go back to the battle? He said, messenger always comes, but I always know before he arrives that he's coming and it's time to go. So uh, that was interesting to, to see it from that perspective. And uh, so then another important life was he was back in the battle same that uh, when the story started and he could feel that he is um, seriously injured. He would tell me exactly where he was injured and that he was losing a lot of blood and now he felt that someone is dragging him away from a battlefield into safety and he could sense that this person was a young man and there was a lot of admiration. Uh, he was admiring this old soldier. Uh, he couldn't recognize the young man but he could feel that there was this connection, he, he guessed he, uh, he, he must have trained him or something. And if you can imagine, if you train hundreds of soldiers, you will not remember every single one of them, but he could sense the feelings, he could sense the connection, which I found amazing. So he dragged him on the side of the battlefield and he left him there and he had to go back, this, this young uh, man that saved him, he had to go back to fight because this was not the time to attend to the wounded. So many soldiers die just by bleeding out because there is no one to, to, to help them. So there he was lying, um, losing all his blood. And I forgot to mention the key part that happened at the very beginning was when he found himself in this battlefield that he injured somebody deadly, but he didn't finish him off because it was a moment where all his anger and resentment of how he spent his life just came to fruition and he didn't want to d kill this particular soldier. He just couldn't kill him even though he knew he was suffering there, dying. It was a very inhumane thing to do. Like once you injure somebody, you have to finish them off so they don't suffer. But this time he couldn't do it. He just couldn't kill that man and he felt really guilty about that. So as he came back now through to, to this point, he, as he was lying there dying, losing all this blood, he said, how appropriate that I lose all this blood when I wasted so much blood throughout my life. So I die by losing all my blood, how appropriate, he said. Uh, so now he took his last breath, he was on the other side and he was, I asked, how do you feel you've done in this life? Have you learned your lessons? And he said, he will never ever be soldier again, how, again, what I said before, how um, unhumane or how unjust way of acquiring land and wealth, that it wasn't right. And uh, he could see all these souls that he killed, thousands of people and families that were left without their father and husbands. And she started crying a lot. Um, she was really sorry uh, about the sadness and grief she caused to all these families. She was truly sorry, asking for forgiveness, and she received it. She there was a huge release of uh, emotions, and then she wanted to ask for forgiveness of this soldier that she didn't kill but injured. So we asked for the soul of that soldier to to be present, so we can connect and communicate. And she recognized her current partner in this soldier. And now it all make, made sense. And her higher self then came through and said that they knew each other from previous lifetimes. There was a soul connection. So even though this man consciously didn't realize that there was a soul connection, subconsciously he knew. So that's why he couldn't kill him because it was a friend and then the higher self revealed it was their contract to end his life this way and um, they asked, he asked for forgiveness, he didn't know what he was doing, forgiveness was granted of course and then the higher self of her present partner came through and told her that of course she'll be forgiven, she is forgiven and that the reasons why they're fighting about these silliest things in this lifetime is um, 
because there was this unhealed past guilt and um, upset because the man who was left on the battlefield to bleed in pain and die that way was really upset about the, the old soldier that he didn't finish him off. Then the old soldier had a guilt feeling about this. So there was this unresolved emotion uh, that was affecting them in this lifetime. So they gave each other, there was this beautiful love feeling. And then um, I ask, is, do you have any message for her in this lifetime? Would the higher self of your partner have any message for her? And it said, uh, yes, she has not been able to believe the depth of my love for her. This will change now. And I already know that the same will happen for me. I will now feel more of her love for me. I feel it already. It's like the spiky edge of our love is gone. So it was beautiful. And then I asked, is there one more message before we let you go? And it said, you have been everything to each other that you can, that you can be to other person in all the lifetimes you have lived together. This is the last time you will have this connection on earth. So why not to make it an enjoyable last time? This lifetime for both is meant to be fun. And now it can be. That is all peace to you. Wow. So, um, I found that was really, really beautiful. And then when I got in touch, uh, we stayed in touch uh, with this client. Uh, she's actually a fellow practitioner. She, I asked her, how is the relationship? And she said, uh, it completely shifted. Uh, there are no more silly fights. And uh, she was delighted. So, And of course, actually, she got a healing. Uh, when we asked her body scan, she got a healing of her arm. And then was the arm she, he was fighting with and killing all these people. So the guilt was held there. How yeah. absolutely astonishing. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really great sessions. And it really yeah. shows you the depth of the connections of the, that, that souls can have. I wonder if you might talk a little bit about something a more, more broad at this point. Um, you were able to make a connection with the um, you know the, the opposing soldier and who then had the higher mm -hmm. self and and there was forgiveness between those two souls and those two aspects. But how about forgiveness as a general sense? You know, we particularly in the Judeo Christian um, you know manner of looking at things, uh, we've basically been raised that God judges us, you know, that God will uh, pass judgment. And if we need forgiveness from anyone, it's from Jesus or from God or from like that. Have you ever found that to be the case in a session? Or what about forgiveness in a bigger sense? What's your ideas about that? That I had a client who was um, a Christian and his faith was very uh, predominant during the session um, in the language he and his higher self used. It came to a point um, he, that uh, Mother Mary was present during the session and he was begging for her forgiveness. And she said, my dear, there is nothing for me to forgive. You are the one that needs to forgive yourself. I love you unconditionally. There is nothing to be forgiven because you are in, on this earth without seeing, you know, you, you have a veil over you. You don't know. You don't understand the higher perspective that we see. We, there is no judgment from their side. They see how we struggle with forgetting who we truly are. So truly, every single one of us just need to forgive ourselves. There's no one else to forgive, yeah. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got uh, 10 minutes or so left in the show. You, uh, just this morning on our original forum, I was able to read about one of your, one of your very last, very interesting sessions. Would you end our, um, our time together by telling us about that session? Yes. So this was a beautiful, again, very detailed. And this one was actually a group regression session. So this, this time, clients didn't lie on beds, and there was no long spiel going into it. Um, we just did a few really short little visualization exercises. Um, she was in, you know, the receiving position. And uh, during group regressions, we would always go into the past life, meet your spirit guide, there's always a message and a gift from Spirit Guide and then possible future life. And people can choose whether they go to 100, 200, or 300 years from now. Um, so this particular uh, 
person, most beautiful being and soul. I'm so proud to actually call her my friend. Um, she saw a past life of a uh, priestess in ancient Mesopotamia in Iran, I believe somewhere there. And uh, her home was um, a ziggurat temple. And um, <clears throat> an important, she described how she looked, beautiful being, white dress, slightly see-through with golden lingerie underneath it. Um, and she, the important day for her was she was being chosen to be the high priestess that will perform the ceremonies. And then another important day was for her to choose the perfect man. She said, there's a line of most beautiful young men in front of me who are all trained to work with energies. Then she had to choose one that will work with her in sacred union. So she picked one. Um, and then their purpose in that life was going from temple to temple to connect the divine feminine and divine masculine and in this cosmic explosion, the energy was radiated, radiated to the land, affecting positively all the people, the animals, the land, and uh, they were basically raising vibration where they were going. Um, so that was incredible, I found. And again, she described it with so much detail, it's on the blog. And then the future life for her was a vision of new earth, um, she described as beautiful cities, communities, the most vibrant colors, and her mission in that life will be to teach others to do the energy work. Um, when I moved her forward to another important day, she was, she was, she saw quite large crystals in front of her, identical looking sex, sex, hexagonal crystals and she was downloading information and intention and energy into each of these crystals because these were then transported to other city centers in order to get the information and download to people that are trained how to get it out of the crystals uh, and she said she could see how she was fine-tuning them and checking them and twisting them and just making sure they're perfect Incredible. So was this one, two, or three hundred years in the future? She chose one hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. How yeah. astonishing! How I will well believe that because there's such, it just everything. It, what's the worst? It's speeding up so rapidly. It's just like this bowl is getting bigger and bigger. And I see. I follow so many groups of all kinds that are involved in this kind of work. And there is such a massive shift in all of them. Everyone really is opening up to this uh, connected consciousness. Yes. Yeah. Working with energies, reconnecting with our divinity, truly living, you know, through heart, sharing love, raising vibration. It's beautiful. I have high hopes for the future. I do as well. Mm -hmm. Julia, this has been such an amazing time with you. I have enjoyed your story so very much. Tell us how people can find you. I also know you're doing some things with sacred sites there in Ireland. You know, I, I, spent, uh, I spent quite a little while going to, to a lot of those, you know, New Grange and Noth and mm. uh, Queen Maeve's tomb. And Noc I just had there an amazing goes. time um, last summer. I can't wait to visit again at some point, but you're doing some things with sacred sites there in the area. I'll mention it very quickly, and again, the most amazing synchronicities are happening around this project. Um, after my level two course, um, when I connected with these beautiful beings, I really feel like they're my soul sisters, and we actually recalled a few of the past lives that we worked um, together uh, as energy workers. I just had this vision that didn't want to go. I just had this vision of a group of people standing in these sacred sites um, doing energy work. And I understand how uh, powerful intention is in our belief system and the energy work. There's so much that can be done just with intention. And I feel that if we get together people who are awakened to these energies and really truly you know living from their heart space if we get many of these together on this very special energy points on earth and if with the intention if we bring the energies through connect and then expand it to the earth it will really help with speeding up change positive change on earth so as i started looking into it i created this group and whoever i contacted they all had the same vision and we all had goosebumps each time and they all have 
certain gifts that will be really valuable to this. And now only yesterday I connected to a person here in Ireland who has connection in Denmark. His sister is doing the same thing in Denmark and she was already seeing as uh, Denmark and Ireland connecting energetically. So I have this vision of the entire globe. There'll be, there are already hundreds of these um, groups that do meditations. And I just feel like we have to take action and we have to do this together. So it should be fun. So next year, um, May to September, we'll go to these beautiful sites and uh, meditate together. Excellent. I'm, uh, I'm headed in your direction next summer myself in May. I can't wait to uh, welcome you here. To the UK <laughs> and possibly Europe as well. Mm. I really hope that, uh, that I'm able to meet you in person at that time. Julia, how can potential clients find you? Uh, thank you. Uh, my website is uh, quantumhealingjourney.ie. And uh, same, I also have a Facebook page, also uh, Quantum Healing Journey, same for Instagram and uh, Twitter. So uh, I'm quite active on social media, always posting something valuable uh, to people. So I look Super. forward to connecting with Super. If we're not connected, please let's let's get connected there as well. Perfect. And for those of you out there who are looking for a practitioner near you, please see our worldwide listings at quantumhealingpractitioners.com. And you can find my own personal website at newearthjourney.com where uh, you can find me here in Kansas or uh, look into my online versions of assistance. Julia, this has been this has been a great way to spend an hour or so of my morning before I head on into a busy day. Would you do this again with me sometime? Absolutely. Thank okay. you. All right. And don't go anywhere. I'm going to shut down the show, but I actually have to talk to you about that image that's behind your head because uh, um, there's a story that I have to tell you. And uh, that's not ready for the world quite yet, but I want to talk to you about it because I think we've made a special connection today. Amazing. So, <laughs> Thank you all again, and join us next time on the Quantum Healing with Candace show. Bye Cheerio. for now.